to live. If we cannot be fruitful, then God is not in us. In Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22, it says, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and the summer and winter, day and night shall not cease these are the weather condition that guarantees fruitfulness. So God's word is binding upon nature. So a man has guaranteed that nature is working for him to be fruitful. At least. See time and harvest. He said the cold and the heat, the summer and the winter shall not cease. Day and night. And this covenant has never been broken. The devil is after your fruitfulness. And God cannot be glorified unless you are fruitful. God cannot be glorified except a believer is fruitful. 
your fruitfulness, the level of your fruitfulness is what determines the glory of God that is being revealed in you. The level of your fruitfulness is what determines the glory of God that is being revealed. What is this level? The level of the quantity of your fruitfulness. The level of the quantity. The Bible said in John 15, 8, he said, in this is my father glorified that ye bear much. Somebody say much. So the God of quantity is the same God of quality. In the ministry of Jesus, he was followed by multitudes. Amen. All kinds followed him. So fruitfulness is a command. Somebody says it's a command. Everything that is not fruitful is going against God. Is going against God's commandments, God's instruction. God has commanded, he said, be fruitful and multiply. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 22, he said it to man. And God blessed them. Saying, be fruitful and multiply fill the waters and in the sea and let the fowl multiply in the earth in Genesis chapter 28 and God bless them again he said be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth have dominion over the fish of the sea tell your neighbor say the devil is against your number When you are about to increase, the devil is always against number. It is a command of God that we should be fruitful. And that means that whatever is not fruitful, there is a cause that is attracted to it. There is a judgment that is in place. There is a force that is acting in advance effect contrary to the forces that God has set in place he said for seed time and harvest cold and winter summer and heat shall not cease God is angry against unfruitfulness amen the reason for unfruitfulness is not because the master have not done everything he ought to have done to his vineyard to bring forth but the vineyard refuses to the investment of heaven are being wasted when it ought to bring forth grapes it was bringing forth wild grapes there is so much room in us believers that many of us are not ready to leave the circumference that we have built for a long period of time that God's grace has become frustrated. God designed you to have from glory to glory experience, but because you have reduced yourself in your mind, you have reduced yourself by your actions. Fruitfulness is a covenant. Tell your neighbor, say fruitfulness. It is a covenant. It is a covenant. So, even though God said be fruitful, you have a part to play. There's a responsibility on you. There's a responsibility on you. And you must understand that this fruitfulness which we are talking about is not just fruitfulness in this world alone, but the fruitfulness that transcends unto eternity. It is a covenant. God has his part and you have your part. So it's not lying solely on God. However, we understand that God's faithfulness is not debatable. God's faithfulness is not debatable. So if it is not happening, it is not God. If it is not happening, it is not what? God. If it is not happening, it is not what? God. 
if we must be fruitful, we have a part to play. Somebody say, you have a part to play? Tell your neighbor, say, you have a part to play. If you must be fruitful, you have a part to play. In Genesis chapter 30 and verse 33, in the house of Laban, Jacob was robbed and for 14 years so, 14 years he was robbed. He was robbed of his wages severally. He was robbed of his wages severally. But in God's part, he was righteous. Somebody say righteous. Now, in Genesis chapter 30 and verse 33, something happened. When God restored Jacob overnight, something made us to understand what produced this thing in the life of Jacob. In Genesis 30 and verse 33, it says, So shall my righteousness answer for me. Somebody say, my righteousness answer for me. Your righteousness has a part to play in what becomes of your fruit or your fruitfulness. Not just the righteousness of God. He said, your righteousness is of me. See the Lord. Amen. God's righteousness has a part to play. But when it comes to the creative aspect of a man's life, when it comes to what? The creative aspect of what? A man's life. Your righteousness will come to play. Because Jacob has never for once, he has never for once taken that we belong to Laban. He has not converted the things that belong to him. He has not stolen one sheep to eat at the back. Even though he knew this man was changing his wages every year. So that he will become poorer and dependent upon him. He gave him two wives. So that he will have more children and will have more reason to labor. And labor even with his children. Even God inside Jacob was enslaved. Because, because of Jacob, Laban was blessed. Laban himself said, God has blessed me because of you. God was in him. But God was enslaved with Jacob. So the righteousness of God alone does not produce your fruitfulness until your righteousness is fulfilled. That's why the Bible said, after your obedience is fulfilled, you judge what? All disobedience. So there are forces that will not fall because you have power. Because you righteously did something. My righteousness. What is your righteousness? Your honesty. What is your righteousness? Doing right. Doing right what? According to that which is stated. According to that which is written. According to that he has said. According to what is commanded. He that doeth right. The Bible said is what? Righteous. My righteousness answer for me. For your fruitfulness to come to play, there is a place of your righteousness. This is the same Jacob that the, 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 the Lord appeared to him in the night, gave him a revelation, and that revelation was what he practiced in the morning. Listen to me. It was not only that revelation that worked. If he had had that revelation and there was no righteousness in him, unrighteousness would counter the seed of the fruit of the righteousness of God. Because God on his own part came to fulfill something. He said, when it shall come for my ire before thy face, everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. Listen, this man after this encounter, he knew that there was no way the devil could get him. There was nothing that belonged to the devil in him. In this dealing with this man, there is nothing that the devil can use to get him. His righteousness must speak. In your dealings with men, can your righteousness speak for you? In your dealings with God, can your righteousness speak for you? 
in your dealing can your righteousness speak for you this is why many can gather and lose again many can rise and fall again righteousness is not speaking for the Bible rightly said, he said, even though the righteous fall seven times, it will what? It will rise up again. The condition is because there is righteousness in him, not because God wants him to rise again. So everything, tell your neighbor, say everything does not depend on God. Say many things depend on you. Every covenant child of God has a chip of fruitfulness in him implanted inside of you to overrule the spirit of barrenness failure death, enchantment wickedness, what is in you is greater than this world, this world cannot withstand it as a matter of fact if you are thrown inside the wilderness and the desert places grass is supposed to grow is somebody here? if you are thrown inside the wilderness and desert grass is supposed to grow because of what is inside you because the seed of greatness is inside everything that will make you to be who you are has been put inside you they can be revealed by prophecy but we are not given by prophecy God's desire that we are earthly fruitful. Tell your neighbor, say God desire, God desire. our earthly fruitfulness. Earthly fruitfulness is not carnality. It's not what? Earthly fruitfulness is not what? Carnality. In fact, Lazarus, when he died, he went to the bosom. Where is bosom? Somebody show me your bosom. A woman should stand up and show me your bosom. He went to the bosom of Abraham. The, the Bible did not say he went to the, to the house of Abraham. Is somebody here? Your earthly fruitfulness has a part to play in your destiny fulfillment in God. Amen? Your earthly what? Fruitfulness has a part to play in your destiny fulfillment. In fact, when you are not earthly fruitful, you can't fulfill destiny in Christ. You can't fulfill destiny in God. One of the things that we, listen, Lazarus made heaven. We bless, we bless God for him. Amen. But how many of Lazarus made hell because of the poverty? Do you know? Poverty destroys people to hell more than blessing. Listen, the reason why blessing can cause carnality, the only reason is the love. If love is misplaced. Amen? So God is not against what? Earthly blessing. God is interested in you having more than you need. His name is El Shaddai. Amen? God, my sufficiency. God is interested in you having more than enough because the Bible said the grace of God is able to make you to have all things so that you can be able to do what? All good works. It is the one that has more than enough that can do all good works. So God desires your earthly fruitfulness. It is not carnality. God wants us to be earthly fruitful and heavenly minded. Earthly fruitful and what? Heavenly minded. So if we live on this earth running after heaven and we are not earthly fruitful, you will discover that you will not even make the heaven. 
Do you think I'm lying to you? I will show you. If you are running because you want to make heaven alone, it is a wrong teaching for you to want heaven alone. Amen? Amen. The Bible said, a man's life does, is not in the abundance of that which he what? Possess it. Why was the rich man, why was his heart wrong? Because his mind was on that which he possessed. His mind was on that which he, that was the only reason. The people that were given the talent, the one that was slothful with it, the one that has one, that refused to trade, that refused to work, that refused to be business minded about the things of God, what happened to him? He was rejected. Amen. You don't know that the business God put in your hand is not only for your mouth. The business God put into your hand is to make you have an influence in your world so that the kingdom of God can expand through you. Then the kingdom of God came into you but never affected anything around you. What is that? You are useless. So what heaven deposited in you only came into you, did not go out of you. The house that God gave to you and it became one room and two room and three room and four room and it became extra at the back. It is for you to have a domain where you can be a disciple to someone. And that destiny may even affect many generations more than you. But when you refuse to have one house and you refuse to touch a destiny, what happened? You have cut short a circuit that is supposed to flow. Tell your neighbor, say, be earthly fruitful and heavenly minded. You are going to pray this prayer on your seat. Say, oh Lord, activate the seed of greatness in my life today. Can you pray that prayer? Marco Parabo Shanda Levariosa Merado Zecrehendo Librahan de Caba Celebre de Cosi Alitano Zika Pani Coti La Rizzo Copondi Alitana Meca Prelegosi Alita Somebody pray that prayer very well Zian de Brosca Pina Tosca Liaia Ezoprekina Tobrahande La Croza Activate the seed of greatness in me. Because of me, my word will be blessed. I have an influence. I carry a kingdom inside of me. I carry a kingdom inside of me. The world is yet to see all of it. Yes, Lord. The world is yet to see all that your kingdom can offer in this world. Let me be an extension, an expansion. Maleko pri la sento paradisi alitana is kupri konde blekeno zialeta. Pray, my sister, pray, my brother. Zeke prelito na desaliada. Lord, let me be an extension of your kingdom. Let expansion be caused because of me. Let righteousness reign. Shagada shalabron de secreteno isuza ziate pane kopri andes kalena. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Can you shout fire? fire? You can't be fruitful by wishing. You can't be what? You can't be fruitful by wishing. It takes work. Somebody say work. You work it out. Your spiritual life must be business-like. Listen to me. God does well with people who are business minded than people who are idle minded. In fact, God does more with people who have wrong motive and on the move than people who have no motive and are sitting. Is somebody here this morning? God does more with people who have wrong motive and they are on the move 
pursuing their motive than people who have no motive and are idle. You must have a drive. Somebody say drive. Your secular drive is not high. You think you, you have a high drive for God? No, it can't work. The reason why many of us are unfruitful for God is because our life is set for ourselves. It is full of wishing. If wishes were horses, beggars would ride on it. Even the man who is wishing doesn't know he's wishing. Do you know why you do you know what is you you are wishing when there's nothing you are doing to what you are thinking? When there is nothing you are doing to what you are thinking, you are wishing. Physically, spiritually, there must be something you are doing to whatever you are thinking. You are either brooding on it spiritually, praying and fasting, then you begin to work it out. Nothing will change on its own. Nothing. Forces and their levels are different. The more abrasive the faster it is the more ab abrasive the faster it is for you to be fruitful you must be business like you must have a mind to trade to trade the gift of God you must have a mind to trade the gift of God you must have an enterprising mind. Listen, Peter was a busy man upon the sea, very busy one, and throughout the whole night, no fish. Jesus caught him. He became the fish that was caught at the bank of the river, and he used him. He didn't use the fisherman that slept in the house, who has packed his boat all through the night and has not used it. The one who has been using his boat for your life to work you must learn to work for you to work for God you must have learned to work in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 16 then he that had received five talents went and trade he traded with the same and made them other five talents. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. Likewise, he had that had two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And hid his Lord's money. When you begin to look at yourself that there is nothing in you, you are actually hiding something in you. When you begin to look at yourself as there is nothing in you, you are hiding something in you. There is no body that is empty. They traded with what they had. Listen, one of the things that drive us to God more is often about what we don't have. But what have you done about what you have? Our prayer is always centered on lack. Now, if God actually gives you everything that you need, how many minutes will you spend before him? How many minutes are you going to end up spending before him? However, you must understand that what you have, what have you done with it? Or what are you doing with it? You must learn to trade. Tell your neighbor, say, learn to trade. Your talent is to be traded. You can't be better off than the effort you are putting into it spiritually and physically. And as much as we know that effort matters, we must know that knowledge also counts. In Acts chapter 6 verse 3, it says, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Whom we may appoint over this business. They just spoke about the Holy Ghost and they were saying business. 
So the work of God is what? Business. The work of God is what? Business. So as a believer, when your life is not business-like, there will always be something that is failing about it. When it is not business-like, there will be something failing about it. No matter how much God bless you with money, when there is no business sense or money sense, there will be lack again. Money is not to be kept. Money is to be used. Money is not meant to be spent, but to be invested. The guarantee of the future is in the investment that you have today. It's not just in what is available today. Shot fire. fire. What have you done with all the knowledge you have in God? All the strengths that God has given you? All the wisdom that he has given you or is giving you? may appoint over this business man who may appoint over this business God's work cannot even work if it is not handled business like so how can a man's life work if it is not handled business like some months back towards the ending of last year a woman in this community just walked into the church here and I don't know her from before but she just came in and said madam I'm seeing a house you're about to roof. A house you're about to roof. But I'm seeing it's like a twin building. Say yes. I said, but everything you need to roof this house is on ground. Say yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I said, hey, this house is a house around you. I said, okay. I said, good, good, good. I said, madam, they want to kill you. The people that kill your husband, they're after you now. I said, God said I shouldn't pray for you. He said you should just go and do three days dry. Lock yourself inside. That's all. You will cancel the plan and don't travel. That was it. Two weeks later. I just had an emergency call. What is it? Say, Pastor, I'm dying. Mother, what happened? He said, You told me they want to kill me. I said, Huh? What did I tell you to do? He said, Fast. Did you? He said, No. I said, Okay. Good night. The next day, she was dead. Instruction the pathway to life. There is a place that your eyes have not seen. The Holy Ghost have seen it. There is a path you can never navigate with carnal knowledge. God can preserve you with simple obedience. There are losses that you can't recover from. But your simple obedience of today, when they come and they are piled up together, they speak as your righteousness tomorrow. You are working it with a man who is hard on you, but you have never for one day cursed him. You have never for one day spoken against him. Your righteousness will speak. Your righteousness will speak. Your righteousness will speak. God's power of defense is in obedience. Therefore, don't just look at the name of Jesus as a tool to throw up and down. Even demons know him as the Lord. Are you here? Demons know him as what? the Lord. So calling on the Lord, it doesn't make any difference. It's your obedience that gives authority to that name. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 15 and 16, it says, See, I have said before thee this day life and good and death and evil. In that I command you this day to love. Somebody say love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your might. Walk in his ways. Keep his judgment and his status. And thou must live and multiply. Thou must live and multiply. Obedience. Obedience to God. Obedience in the house, obedience to your husband, submission, husband, love your wife, obedience.
for you to multiply, there must be obedience that has been fulfilled. Because fruitfulness is a covenant. If you don't belong to the kingdom of God, listen, you can decide to do whatever you want. Life is universal. There are many laws. In fact, there are some laws that can help you to arrive at certain equation that you are doing wrongly. It's still a law. Amen? That's why in, the, in mathematics, there are several laws. There are several laws. Amen. I know God is helping someone today. I know that God is helping somebody today. Increase is God's covenant. Increase is God's covenant. Increase is God's covenant. Believers must understand that even if it is a covenant, there is a part for you to play. There is a part for you to play. This part is what the devil is going to try to move you out of. This part is what the devil is going to try to fight. This part is what the devil is going to try to, to destroy. So that when God is looking at you, it will be seen partial obedience. When God is looking at you, it will be seen obedience and it will not see willingness. It is willing obedience that leads to multiplication. I'm praying for you. Whatever is standing against your fruitfulness today, in this service, they shall be mutilated, destroyed, scattered, and catch fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. How do we become fruitful in God finally? Through service. Somebody say, Serve. Through service, we become fruitful in God. A believer must understand that he should do. He must should do himself around his service to God. He must schedule himself around his what? Service to God. Your service to God begins first of all with your fellowship with the brethren. Amen? Your service to God what? It begins with the fellowship with the brethren. That's one of the first service God said you must not. Because before you became strong, even if you are something now, it was the brethren's shoulder that carried you. Either in the present congregation or the former. It is one body. If it's not one body, you are the one that knows. The body of Christ is one as far as I'm concerned. You must not abandon the fellowship of God's people. Service is not a choice. It's a command. Are you here? Sunday, Sunday service is a joke. Are you here today? Sunday, Sunday service is what? You are a joker. You are joking. They gathered and they broke bread every day. <laughs> Do you know the sacrifice behind that? If it does not come with sacrifice, it's a joke. We have two major services in the month, or in a week. You see, you are still choosing. You spend seven whole days for yourself and your family, and you think you are righteous before God. You are a joker. Even if you are strong enough to stand enough, there are many people who are crippled and they are waiting for you to carry them on your shoulder by your presence. Your presence is magnetic. So, denying the body of Christ, your presence is evil before him. Because if some people did not present themselves, you won't be found where you are. Sunday, Sunday service is a joke. If nobody is telling you, tell yourself now. It's a joke. Seven times daily do I stand before you, O oh God. That was a king. 
not a, a slave that was looking for a miracle that his, his Lord will set him free. Because this is how we know Christianity now. When we have problem, we are always before the Lord. And when you see people who are running after the Lord, you say they are problem people. It is because they have problem. Several years ago in my office, when my boss come in and pray, I'm walking and pray, in a meeting and pray. One day he asked a question. Are you the only one that has problem in this company? I laughed. I said, I don't have any problem. He said, ah, why is it every time you are praying? I said, you can't understand, sir. He said, no, 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 don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. I said, sir, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not using company time to pray. So I have to pray. It's my right. He said, okay, no problem. But just know, I'm going to set a trap for you. I said, no problem. You can't catch me. Now listen to me. One day we were in a management meeting. So they now said, somebody pray for us. <laughs> the Holy Ghost came. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came that day. Nobody was able to open their mouth to pray. Then, I just uttered one word. Father, in the name of Jesus. The whole office shook. The windows clattered back. And breeze came in. And everybody was in shock. They quiet. And this, the first word that came out of his mouth. He said. When a man of God prays. You will know. <laughs> he said when a man of God prays. You will know. On our second anniversary he was here. And when he was here he said. Mm. Now I understand why you were praying. Listen to me. You have an enviable destiny in Christ and true service. What is your second reasonable service to God is to offer your body. Somebody say your body. Your body. Make sure that you first of all, you have to do away with everything concerning inside of you. Be transformed from the inner mind so that your efforts will not be in vain. It may not be now, but in time it will show. It will show that you were just running. It will show that you were just walking, but you were not sanctified. You must serve. Life is a waste when it's not lived for God. Life is a waste when your touch on men does not transcend to eternity. So when you help a poor widow as a believer, you are not sent to be a philanthropist. Don't be deceived by pastors that are sharing money physically. There are pastors that are sharing billions and they don't use camera. I'm not against people helping people uh, because I help people at my own level. But don't be deceived by philanthropy. A Christian is not a philanthropist. Are we here? Uh -huh. A Christian is not a philanthropist. A Christian is a giver. Somebody say a giver. And he said, if you are giving alms, he said, hide it. That no, nobody should see it. That's harm. That's help to the poor, to the needy. That is Jesus' way. Jesus' way. He said, if you are giving offering, <laughs> offer to God the best. He didn't say you should hide your offering. He said, bring the goats, let the man of God check the eye. Either is not blind. It is the offering that we are supposed to show that we are hiding. You squeeze it until usher we fight and fight after service for three hours to stretch the offering and give it life back, resuscitate the offering. They will blow breeze, come back to life to the offering.
Your talent, your money is a means of service. Though they cannot substitute for your physical service. In Matthew 6.33, he said, Seek you first. Seek you first. Seek you first. Seek you first. The kingdom of God is righteousness. Love! Seek you first. Every other thing. You will be tested before you are approved. God is not in a hurry to lift anybody. God does not live by emergency. So if you are coming to God for emergency, this is the reason why we are too many frustrated believers. You are always running off after them. Why will we not see you again? I know of a pastor that was begging somebody, please let me be your pastor. I told him straight, are you crazy? Are you okay? You are begging somebody if, for you to be his pastor. You will beg him to stay. the Lord. God established this service so that we can have a partnership with him. I will be with you always till the end of time. It is for those who are serving. It is not for those who are wandering. From January to date, what is your effort in the things of God? If it is not calculable, it is meaningless. Are you here? Your effort towards the things of God, if you cannot calculate it, it is what? Meaningless. You must be able to stand and say, I've been able to give that into God. I've been able to give so so hours into prayer for the kingdom. I've been able to give this as offering into God. Careless offering, careless blessing. Careless offering, missing blessing. True service, it leads to increase, it leads to fruitfulness, it leads to increase, it leads to fruitfulness. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 25 and ye shall serve. You shall serve the Lord your God. It is he that, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from thee, from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land, and the number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee, and I will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come, and I will make all thy enemies turn their back unto thee. Serve. Enough of complaining about enemy. It is you have not served. You have not served. That's why you are complaining about enemy. Who is the enemy? You carry the mark, the mark of God. Say, let no man therefore trouble me, for I be on my body. The mark, I be a mark, and you say you are troubled. Service is missing. You serve God in the place of prayer. Somebody say prayer. This is what gives meaning to all your services. In the place of prayer. I say, mother, the hours God will demand from you may be higher than your husband. It doesn't need to, it doesn't make, make your husband lazy. As a father, the hours God may demand from you, it may be more than your wife. Let me let you understand this. Until you understand the place of religion and spirituality, you will miss it all. We have come to magnify spirituality and dethrone religion, not knowing that religion gave birth to spirituality. So, giving understanding to spirituality and religion is what gives us the balance. There are certain things that as a believer, you religiously do it. Somebody say religiously. 
the Bible said Jesus woke early hours of the morning. Early hours. He always had early hours. Father. To pray. Early hours. The psalm is several in scripture. You see, early will I rise, O God, to pray thee. Go to the north. They can't miss it. Even if they are dying. Five o'clock, they must close heaven for you. They close heaven. You think they are praying? They are closing heaven. Five o'clock, they must close heaven. <laughs> they release their angels. It's a counter, it's a counter mystery. They close heaven for you. Five o'clock. Allah is not God. Allah is an idol. We stayed there. We know them. So you can't tell me what I know. <laughs> Sir! The faithfulness of God is bankable. It's not contestable. Sal, and you will eat the fruit of the land. There is a place to serve God. Listen. There is a place to serve God and you will be blessed. There is a place to serve God and you will be increased. God can iron you in a place and take you to another place. That was why Moses was prepared in service in the house of his father-in-law for 40 years, for a 40 years journey. 40 years for 40 years. Serving. In fact, seven virgins were in that house with Moses. He's the one that was given that they took. What can God trust you with? What can God trust you with? The things that don't belong to you, you have taken it. Serve. David was in the wilderness with the father's sheep. Tendering that none of them was missing. Not one. The, sh the bear came, he killed it. The lion came, there was no man. And this testimony gave birth to the testimony that took him to the throne. Tell your neighbor, say, serve. Listen. It is a choice. It is not a gift. Lord, help me. It's a diplomatic spiritual wishing. Lord, help me. Child, help yourself. Because if it involves physical payment, you will ask God to help you. Oh, you didn't get that. You will ask God to help you. You will have done it before you ask God if he's pleased with it. Sam, rise up on your feet this morning. Listen to me. In the temple of God, there is the most, the holy of holies. Amen? And there is the inner court and the outer court. One thing you need to understand as a believer is this. On this earth, we are putting in every good effort we can so that we can push for something better. There are positions that if they advertise today and they say we need two engineers, now that two we turn to 20,000. 20,000 we apply for that job. In fact, they will apply before knowing what they want to pay. They will apply before what? Knowing what they want to pay for that position. And that is the way it is. Concerning the things of this world. But when it comes to the things of God and the things that are eternal forever and ever, we just seem not to understand. They just seem not to be the right drive. 
They just have to be a reason to be encouraged again and again. Indecision is a reason for all this. Revelations upon revelation. Inspiration upon inspiration of the Holy Ghost. In you, do this in God. You have been steered. Your water has become unsteerable now. Because you have been steered over and over and over again. And yet, nothing is yet to be done. All these things, cumulatively, are what will determine your fruitfulness in God and in life. Raise your right hand to heaven. Say, Lord, I'm available for you. Use me. Use me. Make me. Make me fruitful. Fruitful. Pray that prayer. Lord, I'm available for you. Use me. Make me fruitful. Help my weakness. Forgive my stubbornness. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Now, this prayer may not be for everybody. You can just pray in the Holy Ghost and ask God for more strength. Lord, I want to be more fruitful. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, mighty name we pray. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? Yes, I'm in this reserve mode so that you can get something. Now, let me let you understand this. As a believer, a week is not supposed to set in without you thinking of who you want to impact. A week is not what? Supposed to set in. Let me tell you something. There was only one reason God blessed Solomon more than David. David was a man after God's heart. There was one reason he had a temple to build. And even his father contributed everything he would use to build that temple before he died. And yet when he came, he said they should bring more. <laughs> Listen to me. God's blessings are easily attractable when you have the mind of God. When you have what? The mind of God. There is a relational work you will have with God that the Holy Spirit will not allow something called need to occupy the space where he supposed to be. He will not allow need or lack to occupy the time that he knows you have willingly rendered to him. A time he knows you don't struggle with him. You have, you have just given him. Then you now need to nera. There is a realm where what you need before you need there is already a supply. You are going to pray this morning. Say, Father. Help me to understand. Help me to understand. The name you have given to me. The name you have given to me. Are you here? The name you have what? Given to me. If a man does not understand the name that is given, do you know he can't fulfill destiny? Abraham had to understand that he's the father of nation for him to fulfill destiny. Jacob had to know that he has become Israel and know that a new nation is actually coming out of him. The reason why you are still who you are because you don't understand your tribe in the spirit. You don't understand your tribe in the spirit. If Eve knew that the destiny of a whole generation of man is lying in a seed, 
she won't compromise. You will pray. Say, Lord, help me to know myself. Help me to know myself. Help me to know who I am in your plan. Help me to know who I am in your plan. Play that prayer. Pray that prayer. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. There are many Joseph in the family today. And because you are in the prison now, you feel that you are a nobody. But because you are Joseph, you have to go to prison so that you can prepare a way for a generation. So that you can prepare a way for a generation. What is your name? What, who are you in the plans of God? There are many Joseph or Arimathea that are waiting to preserve the body of Christ. And all they are looking for is, God, just bless me. I want to buy a new Lexus. Joseph of Arimathea, nobody begged him. Come and preserve the body of Christ. There are many Mary Magdalene that have not known the reason why they are called. A sole financier of the ministry of Jesus Christ. She was not an ordinary woman. Say, Lord, who am I? Lord, who am I? Say, Father, who am I? Father, who am I? Where am I your plan? Where am I your plan? Open my eyes. Open my Open eyes. My mind. Open my mind. Let us pray in the name of Let Jesus. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Mighty name we pray. Say, Father. Father. Listen to me. There was a man called Saul. There was a man called Saul. Are you with me? Uh, assuming his eyes were open on time, do you know that Saul will not have suffered that much? I will have fulfilled much. Because all the while, he was sinning against the Holy Ghost. So when God's mercy came, his soul was delivered, but he has to suffer. Jesus himself told him, he said, the things which you have <laughs> you will suffer. Amen. So, if you don't understand who you are and you are living in error, by the time you now understand, you will suffer for the things you have done. Is somebody here? Jonah was swallowed by a fish even though he had transport. He wasted it to Joppa. He went down to Tashish. After he has wasted his transport, he has to be swallowed by a fish for three days and three nights, no food, no water and hopeless. So the earlier you knew who you are, the better. Don't wait till when you close your eyes to the other side of Jordan. Then also, you live as a two-year-old. And they, say, they now tell you, ah, you got it wrong from the time you were seven years. So what happened to the remaining? They will just put it inside the fire like a baker. <laughs> The thing we burn everything that you did for seven years. So they give you reward of when you were seven years and you went to church and say, Praise the Lord, I'm seven years old. There are things you can't afford to get wrong. You can't be spending Monday to Sunday and there is no record of what heaven is getting from you. What heaven is getting from you is a waste, is a waste, is a waste. This life is too short. The time is too short. There must be energetic drive. If God open your eyes one second and you see demons, you know that people that smoke it, they, they don't have half their power. Some of you were in the deliverance and say, the lady that hit her head on this pillar, did she know that she hit her head on anything? That's the, the force of demonic powers. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Convert every wrong motive. Convert every wrong motive in my life. In my life. To your motive. To your motive. Convert every wrong drive. Convert every wrong drive. Pray this prayer well. Convert every, every wrong drive. drive. To your drive. Convert every wrong motive. Every wrong motive. To your motive.